Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, want to go ahead and we want to go ahead and begin um, this session. So we have a few participants in this call already. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started for time. And uh, first, but firstly, we want to thank everyone here for joining us. Uh, we want to thank our panelists. Uh, and our um, administration for being able to host this event. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started today with our webinar. Um, this is the Scrum Master Fundamentals at Scale webinar, um, and we will be presented by the I4 Group and ISC uh, uh, company. So without further ado, I will go ahead and uh, I'll be the moderator for today, and we'll go ahead and begin with um, our webinar. Bear with me just a moment. So I want to go ahead and uh, begin with introductions. Uh, so we will begin with our introductions of our first panelist, uh, Charles Maddox. Uh, Charles, I see you here on the call. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Uh, thanks, Mohammed, and thanks for all that strength, all that joined. Um, yep, Charles Maddox, um, founder and CEO of the I4 Group. We are a training and consulting company in the agile field, and yet we've been in, we've been doing this type of work for the last ten years, and working in different environments and different industries. And uh, personally, my my uh, background is in software development, which I haven't touched code in over twenty years, but I still have that familiarity. And by over the last ten years, been working as an agile consultant, helping companies develop better processes, technical practices with their uh, software engineering. Um, as well as scaling at enterprise scale to ensure that uh, there are methods and processes in place to help the entire organization become agile. And that's kind of been our focus as of late uh, with the I4 group. And that's about it for me. Thanks, Mohammed. All right, excellent. Thank you so much, Charles. And thank you so much for being here and uh, taking the time to uh, be able to share the information uh, with us here today as well. Uh, next, I'd like to turn it over to uh, our other panelists. Uh, awesome, Shabbat. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Um, yes, just <clears throat> want to say thank you for having me uh, over, I guess we've been doing this for like over 10 to 12 years now. Uh, and about start out software development coding, uh, Windows 2000 server why, back in y, Y2K when the world was going to end. Um, and been working with transformation, uh, organizational development, training of tech, and helping the adoption of tech since Y2K. And been working in Agile Lean uh, with I4 Charles for the last 10, 10, 10 or 11 years, actually, uh, implementing at scale, coaching and supporting, and playing various roles from Scrum Master to PO, PM, uh, RTE. And um, and really been helping to expand this from a lean agile perspective at scale. So, thank you, uh, Mohammed, for having me. Absolutely, thank you so much, Austin, and thank you so much for joining us and uh, being able again, as I said, being able to join us here and share the information that that you have. So, what I'd like to begin is uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into our webinar. Um, we're going to start with a series of questions. So, Austin and Charles, I'm going to go ahead and um, ask you each each one of you kind of just some questions and based off of your experience, you get to, you can share with us and uh, be able to enlighten us with uh, the Scrum Master fundamentals at scale. So um, without further ado, so I'll go ahead and jump in um, into our first question. Um, and this question is going to be for uh, Charles. So Charles, how is the journey different between the new Scrum Master versus the experienced Scrum Master? Uh, wow, this is, uh, I, I love this picture because uh, and we talked about this, how this kind of resonates with a, a Scrum Master's journey. For those that are maybe just listening uh, on the phone, you can't really see this, but um, different stages that you are in your career or your maturity as a Scrum Master, you can see the first is you're just trying to map out where you are. I mean, what, what does the Scrum Master field look like? I've been a project manager or I've been a business analyst. I'm moving into the scrum master role. What should I expect? How should I go about it? And just mapping it out. And then, you know, you first make uh, the attempt or you 
plan a vision, plan a course. You could see the, the guy here driving a car. He's like, oh, you know, what? I'm going to climb that mountain. This is something that I'm, I'm making a, a decision to make that I'm going to go after. It's going to be a career pivot of mine, or I'm going to move into this role and I'm going to uh, go down this path. And then I like this, this base camp uh, idea here where, you know, you just began your journey. You're, you've just entered the, the fold of, of agile and, and being a scrum master and uh, you're getting your, your weight up. You're getting your, your, your credentials up, your training, your understanding of what it takes. You've been in the trenches for a while and you can see the guy scaling the mountain. He's in full, full scale. He's going up the, the cliff and, it even appears dangerous at, at times where, you know, you're really pushing the envelope in terms of helping organizational agility. Uh, you've been in the, you know, it's, you know, more than just a journeyman, you're kind of you're being a, becoming a master, a true master. You say the scrum, <laughs> the scrum master, we're going to get to that one, but you're a true master in, in such that you're really showing the perfection of your craft and you're, you're showing the, uh, the organizations that you, are in how agility can become a part of a mindset within the organization. And so as you're, you know, as being a scrum master, uh, you may land in different situations in different companies at these different times and periods over your career. So, you, you know, how to plot a course, how to, um, you know, plan where you're going to go from here. You know, there's, there's a different perspective each time here. So, um, but yeah, I like this visual. There's, you know, definitely need to understand where you are in your career, where you're trying to go in different uh, areas apply uh, in, in, this, in, this, in this particular uh, area. So, um, but yeah, this, these are kind of four common areas where scrum masters would find themselves um, within their career. Again, plotting out a course, you know, making a decision on this is the direction I'm going. You get established at base camp. And then you're kind of honing and perfecting your skills. Another thing that's common in the industry, what we hear around this is kind of the shuhari approach. And that can apply to the role itself of a scrum master, where you're, you go through an understanding of where you're going, and then you're starting to practice uh, some of the aspects that you're learning. And then the re is kind of you're starting to optimize or, and or perfect and master and become a master at your craft. So uh, excellent, excellent choice of uh, describing the journey. I like this moment. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Charles. It's a very insightful for you and uh, to describe these pictures in as the journey as a scrum master. Um, it's also very insightful uh, to have the, this visual representation. Uh, awesome. I want to turn this over to you with the same with the same thing with the same image here that we see um, in, re in regards to the journey. Um, so what are the distinct differences in, in challenges that a new scrum master faces versus an, ex, uh, an experienced scrum master that might, might face? Uh, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, that's a good question. I think part of the challenge, um, and I think uh, if I, you know, reflecting back on who I've coached and the work that we've had to do, um, and as you mature, one, misconceptions on what a scrum master is. Me at coming into it, what do I need to know? What, what am I supposed to do? I think if we ask everybody, you know, when we start asking, you know, you get, it's a DSU, you know, it's, it's this, you know, everyone has their idea of how they constrain the role or expand the role. And I think that that's uh, something that as a coming into it, you don't know what you don't know. And you're collecting like that map, you're looking for guidance, you're looking for uh, a path to show you, hey, is this, am I going the right way? Is this the right thing for me? And you're trying to shift through all the information. You know, you got people like myself, uh, you got people like Charles, you know, we, we're often out here connecting with communities of practice and talking to them. And then as you become experienced, you realize that everyone looking at the Scrum Master uh, is looking at from a different perspective and you have to meet them where they are and you have to know what your goals and objectives are. And like that base camp photo, every time you meet a new team, you move from being a master to a learner, you know, no matter how much experience you have, you have to watch the dynamics. You have to get the feel for your team and the obstacles and the challenges that they're going to have. And then again, there's the tooling that you're going to use as you um, look at the, um, the one who's repelling up the, who's ascending the face of the mountain right now. You know, who, who, who are your strong teammates? Who, who, what's the skill set? Who's doing the belaying, right? And as you climb, what are the tools you're going to need if you're using, uh, uh, one of the, the tooling, of, I hate to say agile tools, but to help facilitate tools, you know? And so I think that that's one of the main differences is that 
when you are experienced, you have to forget what you've learned sometimes because every opportunity, every ascent, every new base camp you set up has different dynamics and is a different culture and what it means to be high performing. And, 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 and it's an adventure to me every time one starts, it's a new adventure, so. Absolutely, thank you so oh, much for it. Go ahead. I just wanna add just to say, I think the Q and A is open uh, as well if people wanna post questions as we're moving through so we can pick those up. Uh, and make this interactive so we're not lecturing at you. Um, this is about being interactive. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Austin, for, and for mentioning that as well and for sharing your, the information and your knowledge. Um, so yes, as Austin mentioned, um, please utilize the chat for any questions and uh, for any questions uh, so that we can go ahead and take questions uh, as, as we go along through this course uh, or this webinar. So, Excellent. So I want to thank you both, Charles and Austin, for, for sharing this, this information here. Uh, now, when we jump, when we talk about the a scrum master, right, what do we, when we, in terms of the scrum master here, so uh, Charles, I want to address a question to you. So as a scrum master, uh, how should I address my organization's skewed interpretation of what a scrum master is supposed to do? And I think Charles, you're on mute. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent question, Mom. And yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, this, this slide kind of it, it really tickles me about the <laughs> about what what uh, Morpheus is saying here. It says, "What if I told you Scrum Master is not a project manager?" It's like boom, blowing your mind. On uh, you know, a lot of project managers think, "Oh, I thought I was just going to be setting up a bunch of meetings and just monitoring progress and doing check-ins." Well, the Scrum Master is much more dynamic than that. It, it's a very dynamic role. And, and we oftentimes um, find it a little bit hilarious too, why you know, somebody can just take a two-day class and all of a sudden you're a master, <laughs> you become the master. And uh, so as we see Anakin here too, did someone say master? Yeah, you're just an apprentice typically. And most, you know, and that's the reality is like a lot of Scrum Masters are in the learning journey along the way. Um, and at the beginning, we're talking about mostly mechanics, right? We're talking about how to establish and understand some best practices, what agile is, what agility is, what are some of the events that I can help uh, facilitate and be a standard bearer for agile, uh, agile best practices at these different events. And I'll, I'm gonna give you some of my, uh, I like to talk, give you, I, I was an old Kung Fu geek, right? Back in, back in the day when Kung Fu movies were popular and, and watched a lot of them. And if you remember, the guy that had the long white beard, he was almost invincible to beat. And the, guy that, the, the guys that actually uh, were able to defeat this guy who was invincible, they actually defeated him with what they call soft Kung Fu, which was being able, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the, the yin-yang concept, the soft style of, of uh, of, of Kung Fu and of martial art. Very similarly, and there's a lot of type, type of martial arts connections with, uh, with Agile actually too. And I just mentioned like the Shu Ha-Ri approach as well. Uh, but also too, some of the soft skills as a scrum master are some of the most powerful. And you oftentimes don't develop those until later. And to, to really become a master, a master scrum master, you're, you're developing the uh, emotion, emotional intelligence, conflict resolution, coaching, um, you know, under, understanding being a servant leader versus just being, um, you know, just very tactical and, and focused. So actually truly becoming the master, if you see on these, uh, these slides here, is really being in the trenches um, and understanding those, those soft skills that it takes to really move the team, to move the team forward. Uh, very similar to like any coach, I mean, again, a scrum master, they, you always see bullet number one, it's a coach, it's a team coach. If you think of any good coach in sports, you will see that they're like excellent motivators, that they challenge you, they challenge the norm, they make, they, they make sure you challenge your assumptions and what you think is uh, comfortable. They never uh, technically allow you to be in a comfortable position. They're always challenging you to be better, but similar like a scrum master, right? You shouldn't be the one that's making everybody feel comfortable all the time, but you're constantly challenging and pushing the envelope of performance and understanding that you're growing a team to high performance. And so um, that's, what I, that's kind of what I take when I see the slide master. Who, who's the master? Absolutely. 
Thank you for that, Charles. And uh, thank you for the, uh, the, the comedy on this as well. So, right, so we can see the, the two, how it, how it relates to these movies, but it still can relate to a scrum master role. Uh, and Charles, you did talk about learning and being able to uh, challenge, challenge as a team, as a coach, you challenge the team um, and, and, and establishing this learning. Uh, so I wanna, I wanna change, uh, turn to Awesome and I wanna ask this question to you. So what role does education and learning play within the organization for getting the right interpretation in place for the Scrum Master role? Oh, that's a big one. Um, I think it's it's one that, uh, Mohammed. wow, that's a good question. Um, so I'm gonna I'm I'm take it from an inside out approach, right? Because there's training and there's a certificate and that certificate will say, you know, you are a master and Anakin, as we know, never became a master and he couldn't, he couldn't accept that. And, and sometimes uh, scrum masters depend on the organization that they go into. They're not perceived for their value and they get relegated to a meeting uh, manager, right? And so how do you educate from, from within to the outside world who wants you not to exert your influence and not to step into coaching and actualizing what it means to be a, a master in your domain. And so you always are educating and pushing the boundaries and really putting ego to the side um, because you are representing more than one point of view. And so as that base camp, you know, the safety of your team and at the base camp, you really set norms right around what it means for us to interact and establishing shared meaning. So you're educating there as well and you're developing a culture. So a scrum master, the team of a scrum master is really set on your culture that you bring to it and then stepping out of yourself to expand on the culture that it takes to the team to be successful. How do we leverage a DSU so it's not boring, right? How do we bring our own, our own spice and seasoning to this recipe to give it flavor? And at the same time, what are the challenges that we need to present? What are the obstacles that we need to do to create that tension in the team to allow them to sprint to their goals? Because I'm really working towards that and removing those barriers and impediments. The second part to that is that the- uh, Am I echoing stuff? Okay. Um, and all the different solutions and services. Uh, so then other than that, I think that we need to then, I think something just happened here. And essentially create an ecosystem that says, okay, Microsoft's at the center. Can you all hear that? There's some discounts and donations offered uh, here. I can, and I can hear you, but I can hear the background. Okay. The background. Sorry about that. Something just started. My phone started ringing or something. Sorry about that, team. Um, is this being able to then coach your team to meet those tension points in Excel? How do I interact with leaders? Each leader has their own personality. So there's no one script that's gonna fit. Education then becomes technical excellence within the team, right? Stewardship and advancing the interests of the team and then allowing it to achieve its goal. So you are, you are dynamic and ensuring that the team never becomes st stagnant. You look for learning opportunities and you look to see what the roadmap looks like from a skill set perspective, right? And from soft skills, from a leadership perspective as a steward, the well being of the team is in your charge. And that's something that I think that we as scrum masters, when we have to play those roles or coach, is that the scrum master's head is always on the pivot, you know, always looking to see, hey, who's trying to excel? Where are the opportunities at? And then what can we do to anchor that? And education, certification is a plus. It does help, you know, it does help you get the norms down. It does help you get a community of practice where you can learn that, but also establishing that community of practice within the team, being able to enable them to achieve their goals and create a freshness where it's not just that repetitive. We come in and we're heads down and we're just, you know, pretty path mules to going up the ascent, which you sit on the scrum master to keep the team alive help them stay fresh, help them recover. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you so much. Awesome for that. That's a, a excellent insight on that. Thank you very much for that. You know, you, so awesome. You, you kind of described the scrum master in a somewhat of a complex role, but if you can summarize the, the scrum master responsibility, how would you summarize that? Uh, my team my team delivering value and not betraying the trust of my team. My team needs to know that I can stand up 
with the uh, to my PO, right, to my product managers and leaders and not sell them out and blame them because, you know, we're not achieving our sprints and that they believe that I inherently as a scrum master have their best interests at heart. Right. And that I'm actively not just removing barriers and impediments, but also expanding the scope of what we can achieve. And so those soft skills that uh, Charles alluded to earlier those become very core and fundamental. Your ability to navigate the politics, your ability to empathize with the dynamics, and yet still continue to keep us sprinting forward and renewing. Managing the retro so that the retro doesn't become boring, but becomes a learning point, an inflection point where we can make decisions and have autonomy to govern ourselves. There's a lot in that. So one of that is being able to lead and then step back and let the team make good decisions and never get complacent in learning. And I, I think that for me, that learning is core because you don't you don't get old with learning. It doesn't get stale. So finding new horizons uh, as, as the one that's behind you on, on, on your uh, background, finding new horizons. Excellent. Thank you for that. Excellent. So uh, awesome. You, you mentioned and, and Charles also mentioned, you know, you discussed these soft skills that scrum masters need. Uh, so Charles, I want to turn this over to you. So what are some of the key attributes of a of the scrum master's job um, that operate in a scaled environment. Sure, thanks, Mamba, for that question. Um, and yeah, and that, and that scene you pulled up this uh, this uh, these pictures here of a, of a restaurant, and um, I think this really resonates really well with um, a scrum master's role in the in the big picture of things. So, uh, if you if you imagine one of your favorite places to go out to eat that's really busy on any weekend or Friday night or something like that. Um, multiple hostesses at uh, hostess and hostesses at the, at the front that you come in, you got to wait for a while and, and queue. And then once you get seated, you know, you're probably one of maybe hundreds of people in the restaurant, you know, many waiters, waiting tables and many cooks in the kitchen. All right. So very similar to our large organizations, right. That plan and deliver products and solutions to customers, um, delivering a good meal, to uh, a family is really no, you know, and, and please having a pleasing experience is really no, really no different than, than delivering the optimal solution to a customer. Very complex terrain to navigate, and sometimes people are hard to please. Certain cooks in the kitchen, you know, want to leave early. You know, there's, there's all types of scenarios at play where where things can go haywire and communication is not right, and you can cause a mess on, on any given night. So. Um, so it's kind of using that as an analogy that everybody can kind of relate with that your, your ideal scrum master is that host or hostess, or that, that hostess that meets you at the front, that understands that coordination there. I mean, they're, the, they're the, the face of coordination essentially in that entire ecosystem, which is this busy restaurant to make everything keep flowing smoothly, keep these meals coming to, to the tables and, and um, everybody's kind of in line in communication uh, essentially to make sure things are operating and flowing smoothly. Another, another uh, uh, key point about that, and I think you alluded to this, Mohammed, is about the, the aspect of scale. Any large restaurant with so many tables being served, you know, 10, 20 people in the kitchen, we're talking about scale. We're talking about more than just a single team going about doing work. So how do we keep everybody in alignment? We need some structures. We need some um, communication channels in place to make sure everyone's aligned and things are transparent. That, again, that, that we keep the value and the customer satisfaction flowing through at an even pace. And so, um, so and essentially, kind of core attributes and responsibilities for, for that Scrum Master are understanding those constructs of agility that help the team. Also, too, understanding those constructs of agility that need to be applied at scale. And I can kind of elaborate, you know, the key terms that, you know, for those that are on the call that might not be familiar with those, those agile practices, but they come down to things like sprint planning, daily stand-up, sprint reviews, sprint retrospectives, scrum of scrums, PI planning, uh, PO sync, art sync. There's these different connection points to keep the larger ecosystem, you know, in well, good communication, things transparent, uh, dependencies transparent, flow transparent, um, and even bottlenecks uh, in, in such transparency so that we can escalate and make you know resolve some of these problems that uh, that that happen within our within our domain. So uh, anytime that you guys are out for dinner, 
and you see and it's really busy, think about that. There's, there's some scrum master at play, making sure we're keep, keeping everything on track. And um, again, kudos to you, Mama. You're keeping us on track with this, uh, <laughs> this presentation. <laughs> Thanks. And, and if I could add to that, Charles, I think that you, you hit on something that's really important, that the, that the host, i.e. scrum master in this th dynamic, is setting a tone. They've already checked in and who, what teams are managing in which spaces, what their load and capacity is, and they're managing to make sure that not too much is flowing to the any particular section of the restaurant. And they also are working to help make sure that the value that's being delivered to each one are from the kitchen side, where there's another team at that has its own scrum master that's back there working to deliver value, that you as the end user or customer in this case, that the value that's delivered is what you want. Having simply having a plate thrown on the table and the experience being gone from it and then it's cold is not value that you would appreciate. And so the scrum master helps have shared meaning on what that value is and help set the tone and help make sure that everyone's being paid attention to. So if there are members of the team who get off track that they help realign them to this is our focus and, and our customers come first and this is the value that's being delivered. And then all of those fundamental pillars that Charles mentioned earlier uh, from the scrum of scrums, the, the, the retros, the sprint planning, all, all that then helps to deliver that agility state and to keep that mindset present when the pressure's on. Um, so uh, I just wanted to add that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Austin, for that, and, and and thank you both for the for the analogy. Um, you know, for similarly, you know, similar to how we see a restaurant now, we can visualize that this is how a scrum master would work with with the multiple teams and ensuring that there's, uh, you know, to to your point, Austin, that there's some some sort of balance uh, going uh, available. So, Austin, I, I do want to address to you. So now. Um, in, in regards to making establishing this balance, how does the how does the scrum master manage the balance between being a little disruptive and being productive? Yeah, that's uh, that goes to um, I guess I'll pull a martial arts thing, but I, I'll go to uh, what Charles said earlier: the yin and the yang. Uh, this is one that we often use uh, when we talk about uh, how engaging a scrum master is. And a scrum master has to, especially as you become a master, right? As you start to develop your soft skills, you start to know when to step in and when to facilitate. The, the scrum master cannot be a passive agent. And right now we see Ivan, he's, he's, <laughs> he is very passionate about his role in maintaining the fidelity of the tooling and the instruments in this case. In this case, even though it looks like a board, that board is a communication point and everyone needs to trust what it's communicating, whether it's on JIRA, right? Whether, whether you're looking at another tooling uh, situation, you are using that tool. And so if I come up and change the shared meaning of what the definition of done is, right? And move the state without validating with my scrum master that it has met the acceptance criteria and that it is done, then uh, Muhammad, I should be looking over my shoulder. If, it, if it's Susan, right? If, if it's Saran, maybe coming, <laughs> coming down, <laughs> even if we were remote, I should have some regard for the, the terms that we've agreed to work with. And so the, the, the scrum master has to know when that dynamic needs to be solved by the team, because the team sometimes has to own that, hey, this is not how we do it, especially if there's someone new. And we have team agreements that the scrum master helps facilitate and the tone, right? And how we treat each other and manage conflict as Charles alluded to earlier. And then at the second half is then, when do I actually need to step in at the, as a scrum master and let the team know as a coach, okay, time out, time out, you know? And this is a version of, uh, of uh, Ivan's time out. He's saying time out. <laughs> so. Uh, this is a good one. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Awesome. And thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing uh, on Ivan himself too. So um, his, his role as a, as a scrum master. Yeah. So Charles, just a, and, and I want to turn to you over on this. So can you explain, and you know, we see Ivan here as being an engaged scrum master. Um, and can you explain what an engaged scrum master looks like in a, in a scaled environment? All right. Thanks, Mama, for that. Um, I, I would advise you not to grab somebody by the, the throat <laughs> and you're in, at being a new scrum master in the organization and put them up on the wall. Uh, so this is, this is comical, but you know, I, you know, it's, it's showing that Ivan is definitely engaged. I mean, he's passionate about this. The, the guy actually, 
with, which is actually really ticking Ivan off, is he's, put, he's moving his, his car, his development car, and calling it done. And you, you see that guy looking around. You know, you know he, he didn't meet the definition of done, to Austin's point. He probably didn't do some, you know, some, some, he didn't have a code review or he didn't have a, uh, some type of review or meet some, some certain criteria. But he's like, I'm calling my stuff done. I want to be done. I want to go home. Whereas, you know, a part of our agile principles, right, are, is, is like quality matters. You know, we don't flex on quality no matter what. And Ivan takes that to heart. And so he's truly passionate about that to the point where he's disruptive a little bit. And I think I mentioned that a little bit earlier that a, a good scrum master is disruptive. It's creating that, that, that right balance where you're, you're pushing the norms. You're not sitting around very complacent and you know, just, just falling into the, the same old, same old where, you know what, yeah, you know, I'm just going to just kind of be easy and let things go where, no, you're constantly pressing the envelope of performance. As I mentioned in the coaching scenario, constantly trying to find ways to motivate people to higher and higher levels of performance. And so things like just moving the SQL posted over into the done column, when you know you didn't meet that criteria, is it, something that Ivan doesn't play with. He doesn't, he doesn't go that route. Because you could also too imagine that, at scale and where this comes in at scale is, is that now the team has a misrepresentation about their actual status and progress that they're making. Think about how that impacts integration across the entire system that, you know, it could potentially be looked at as this team has been fully integrated. They're fully done. They're meeting the, the full done criteria. And then that impacts another team's ability to effectively plan and integrate and, and deploy their solutions into, a, into whatever environment that they want to go into next. And so uh, that's why it's important that a Scrum Master uh, allow for that clear communication and transparency because they're, they are the connection point. They are the coordination point to other teams and, and to the larger organization at the whole to make sure that they're properly and accurately reflecting what's happening uh, you know, at the ground uh, for their particular team. So at scale, this becomes uh, very important. And that's why it's important to understand some of these concepts at scale and some of the events at scale that uh, are important for that to make sure that these things are communicated properly so that you can keep an entire organizational unit in, in, in alignment together. Because it's not just all about your team and no one else, that your team is, a part, is just one team in a greater ecosystem of other teams working and trying to deliver solutions to customers as well. So it's very important that a Scrum Master understand these aspects at scale, and that they understand the engagement within their team and outside of their team to make sure that everything is, is flowing properly and smoothly. Thanks, Bob. Excellent, excellent. So thank you both for for sharing, uh, Charles and Awesome, uh, on on this um, and and showing you know depicting on how Ivan as a Scrum Master, being an engaged Scrum Master, he uh, works with the teams and makes sure that the teams aren't doing anything that. They are not supposed to. So they, they, he's coaching the teams a little bit more violent, but um, and this is just more for comic relief. But um, thank you for both for for sharing your your insight on this. So when we talk about when we talk about Scrum Master, we we often know that there are so many different pathways for the Scrum Master. Um, and so Charles, I want to ask you there. Are, so with with so many different pathways and certifications out there, how do I know which one I should take? All right. Yeah. Great question, uh, Mohammed. Um, so yeah, getting, you know, I definitely advise getting some scrum master training and also to getting, you know, maybe if, if scrum master training is a little bit beyond you think where you're at currently, uh, possibly getting some agile fundamentals training. There's some courses like in the IT agile domain that can at least kind of baseline yourself on understanding the fundamentals of agile as well as Scrum Alliance or some, you know, Scrum Fundamentals courses, things of that nature. But what, what is agility? Understanding agility. So you have those concepts down. Um, also, then, then right after that, you probably, you know, it's good to have some type of Scrum Master certification. There's, you know, there's a Scrum.org, there's a certification, there's a Scrum Alliance, as well as the, the Safe Scrum Master certification as well. But these certifications will enable you to understand the core practices of Scrum. So not only that you got the fundamentals, of, of Agile in place, but you understand how to apply it uh, in these particular Scrum events, okay? The thing about certification is it's, it's a stepping stone. Again, you don't become the master right after the, the class, obviously. 
it, you grow into this. You need to apply it. So getting the Scrum Master certification is just one step in your overall journey, but it is necessary. It shows you do have a level of understanding that you went through some training, you potentially passed an examination of some sort, and that you, you have some proficiency at being able to articulate the concepts within the Scrum framework and in, in, in larger frameworks such as the, the Scaled Agile framework as well. Um, I will add that the Scaled Agile framework certification does add those concepts of a Scrum Master being in a scaled environment. So we do elaborate quite a bit on how do you as a Scrum Master coordinate with other Scrum Masters in, in a larger ecosystem on how to um, essentially on how to be an effective Scrum Master in a larger organization beyond just your team's boundaries. So, uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, you know, getting training is, is definitely one of, one of these steps, but I, I, like I said, coaching and mentoring uh, with other more experienced scrum masters and coaches, you know, on the ground in an organization, that's also needed as well. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Charles. Charles, for that. Uh, and so, so talking about in regards to going back to the concept of coaching, um, awesome. I want to address a question to you: What does having coaching and mentorship uh, play along with certification training? What role does it does it have? Um, <clears throat> it's a dynamic role, Muhammad. I think because that's a good question when you look at it, right? we can't necessarily take credit for the team's work. You know, the, the coach should be able to, to facilitate and be in the background and lead from the back, right? And at the same time, there are opportunities with leadership when the scrum master is in front. And then is the time when the scrum master is embedded with them. Those dynamics have those ceremonies help facilitate that. Like doing a retro, is it my voice or is it my team's voice, right? Uh, that's, that's an important time for the team to really look at itself, do its assessment. What is my role as a coach? Pull out the stats, right? Pull out the data to help them make better decision-making. So there, there's those points where they lean on me from a facilitation standpoint or from a data standpoint to be objective and to give them a picture of what we did do. Uh, so I think it's dynamic. And then I think as a coaching point, at, uh, externally with some stakeholders, i.e. the PO, et cetera, I may have to coach them on their tone and how they're interacting with the team, right? How the, what the team's capacity actually is, and then coach them to be able to right size the work in order to fit that, right? When it comes to sizing and estimating, what is my job as a scrum master? Am I telling them what it is? Or am I letting the team be empowered to facilitate and assess based on their experience to help drive to better outcomes of what value we can agree on that we can definitely deliver. So I think that that's that point as you grow into your role and become a master, you start facilitating better knowing when to drop back. Because as your team matures, technically speaking, you know, uh, I don't know who's Tampa Bay Bucks fans here, but since, you know, Brady's there, we might also well go with that, you know, um, you have to be able to know when you as a coach, when the team has it, right? They got it. They're functioning. They're high performing. They've established the norms and technical excellence. I don't need to keep putting my hands in there now. And sometimes letting go is one big advantage or, or struggle for scrum masters who come from a traditional approach where you're used to telling people what to do. And sometimes the biggest challenge is just holding yourself and letting the team work through its dynamics and solve its problems and move to high performance. So I think it's a very dynamic role and it's a soft and powerful role. Excellent. Excellent. Thank Good you. Question. For, thank you, Austin, for, for sharing, for sharing that. Uh, I do want to address a question uh, in our, uh, in our Q and A uh, uh, from Dante. So as a new scrum master updating my, my CV, I get empowering my team. They're delivering their delivery value and are for the most part, self-governing. What would it look like or worded on my CV as not just taking credit for team results as like a PM product manager? I'm going to take that one off. Awesome. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, that, 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 Cause that depends on where you're going, right? You know, where's the, where, 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 where are you going as an organization, right? Charles, I, I think is really important. 
And so I, I don't want to flip flop on it because I think it's dynamic and maybe we can just tag team it. I think there's one level where you talk about your KPIs, right? What are you driving to performance uh, and your ability to align to achieve your goals and that you coach towards excellence and what are you doing to do that? And what are those key words and patterns uh, that you are able to align to? If you know what tool set that the organization is using to achieve agility, right? If they're in a safe or if they're from Scrum Alliance, whatever that platform or framework that they're using and being able to speak to that's going to be important. Charles, your thoughts? Just because I love all something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My thoughts on that is, you know, I think of what I'm hearing is that, um, yeah, you, you're not necessarily taking credit for the team's success. Um, teams could be high performing, right? That's just the, the, the fact of the matter. Um, the thing about in sports, you still, you, you know, teams that are successful, the coaches get the coach of the year award, like, but I know there's some, there's some good coaches too, that are not on, there are some unsuccessful teams too. So, but the thing is, is that, you know, as a, I remember there's a good, here's a good um, analogy to that. I remember a couple of years ago when the golden state warriors were always in the finals, their coach, Steve Kerr basically inherited a championship team. I mean, as soon as he started day one, they were almost there in the finals. And people are like, well, he didn't really build that team. He didn't build the culture. But, you know, it, but Steve Kerr, he, he made a very valid point that I always applied to the scrum master role yeah. um, and coach, the coaching role. He said, you know what? It's a challenge. It, it's something that you got to test yourself to keep finding ways to motivate and get better. And that was one of his biggest challenges. I mean, he's got the all-star, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, all the guys that are like the, probably the greatest players of all time. He, he, he said his challenge was to come, keep coming up with ways to find and motivate them. And that was a, that was a challenge in and of itself. And so you, even though, yeah, you're not, you might not be taking credit necessarily for their work, but just, you, you need to find some, I mean, even setting up a, a scrum master community of practice or something, setting up a lean coffee um, event where you can share ideas about best practices. That's just taking, that's things that take it to the next level. You know, you're just finding ways to kind of take it a notch higher. And, and, and so if you put that on your resume with a high performing team that, Hey, I, I established a, a lean coffee event for the entire scrum group that I worked in, or, you know, had, was the per first person to start a community of practice. And you start sharing best practices with other, I mean, sharing with your, what your team is doing great to the other um, teams it is, is an opportunity for improvement. So just the small things. Yeah. It's unfortunate. They say a, a good scrum master, by the way, kind of works themselves out of a job. Out of a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah true. You kind of just sit back and it's, it's a high performing culture and you just can sit back and watch it. So, um, kind of, it is what it is in that case. And I think that goes to the dynamic too, sometimes when new scrum masters come and inherit two teams before they've normed, you know, and typically you build your, your strength behind one team in a pattern and you gain that experience before you step into the other one. So being able to point to, as Charles said, some of those clear artifacts or ceremonies that you helped establish that improve the system and added value and continue to evolve the team and continue to achieve its goals and align. So those, if you've done that, then those are the spaces where you as a scrum master can own what you brought to the table. And then the result is the improvement in the team. So look at that. Uh, and the way you maintain business relationships and advocate with them and working and collaborating with the PO to ensure that the work is sized uh, and that it, delivery is on time. Thank you both for, for that for, and for sharing the insight on that. Um, I'd like to also, so at this time, I'd like to open the floor for any questions that you may have. Um, so thank you, Dante, for that, for that question. It's a very good question. Um, so if you have any questions, you can open the floor for, uh, you can either raise your hand, we can allow you to speak, or if you'd like to uh, put it into our Q&A, uh, we can definitely go ahead and answer it from there. Uh, so I'll give it just a brief moment here before we, we move on. So it seems that Charles and Awesome uh, did such a great job of explaining the Scrum Master role that we don't have any questions, right? Yeah, I, I just want to make one comment, Mom, and if I can. So yeah, and I understand, you know, anybody who is uh, that sees this uh, webinar either live or recorded, 
um, you know, definitely we, we are open. Us and I, we're, we're coaches, we're enterprise coaches, and we help scrum masters and we help organizations. And, and we, we definitely just like giving back and, and helping those that have come through the journey. I've been, I was a certified scrum master at one time, so I, I understand the whole journey and going through this, 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 uh, and navigating these terrains. So we, we definitely are, you know, open to helping and we, we love, we love to do that. We love to give back. And that's part of the, this, the whole idea of these webinars is to, to really share what we know and to help anybody else that's coming up and, uh, to help you guys, uh, you know, grow and, and become better practitioners on your journey. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Thanks, Tommy. There's a new Q and a question too, Mohammed that just came in. Yes, I, I see that. So thank you. Thank you, Rose. Um, so the question is, how do you transform a project manager mindset to a scrum master mindset and any tools for coaching? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I can say that that depends on the person. Uh, but part of what I would recommend is design thinking. Um, improv spaces where you have to uh, let go of of the assumption that you know the outcome right let go of that you're the one in quote control and responsible for controlling and shift to uh, a steward mindset so also look at what does stewardship mean to you and how do you see what attributes or values uh, you can bring to it how to leverage the tools. I've seen um, retros where the scrum master for better or for worse will have a leading question, right? And that kind of sets up or kills the conversation um, because it, they will say, well, we haven't, um, I didn't see anything wrong this week, you know, in the last two weeks with the sprint. What about you guys? You know, then who, who wants to counter that, right? So learn how to ask open-ended questions that facilitate people to go deeper uh, your team to go deeper, but first know thy own culture, know thy own self, what you bring to the table uh, and ways that you can consistently improve. And that, that's a good tool. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good tool. I facilitation, I think is, is important skill set because it helps you not control. It helps you let go and, and come back. Uh, it's leading as Charles used to uh, mentor me at one point in time, leading from the back of the room you know, and learning how to do that effectively, even in trainings, so. Excellent, thank you so much, awesome. I, Charles, any... yeah, yeah, I gotta add to that too. Um, you know, one, one tool that I know um, is a one of the principles of um, the Scaled Agile framework is cadence and synchronization. Um, and in applying that, you know, and, and this is something that's not, you know, uncommon or unfamiliar in project management is to do rolling wave planning and to do and to have a cadence and a project. But you know, these are learning moments that every time you kind of you have something on a cadence and you synchronize, it's a learning opportunity. It's a it's it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a time in which to evaluate value being delivered at that that time and space at, at that particular time. And so that's the kind of the key difference between project management and agile delivery is we have incremental value delivery happening all the time versus just sticking to a project plan and a work breakdown structure, which hopefully you deliver some value at the end and it's and everything is, is perfect. Whereas, it, you know, the, the light bulb starts to come on when you start to have these recurring meetings in an agile environment where you're talking about value that's being delivered. And so, Basically, what, I, what I'm meaning to say is, is, is that sometimes it's the evolution. The organization has to be exposed to these new ways of working. It just takes a while to get it. You know, at some point, it starts to click. You know, you never go into any new organization and these traditional project managers and even the leadership automatically say, oh, I understand. I understand the value of agile versus project management. Let, let's just, just go dive in and do it. They're always stuck because they're, they're understanding to Awesome's point is that they they're, they're used to having this, this preset plan on how to, you know, supposedly predict everything out to the, to the, to the T uh, at some, some, some type of milestone out there, whereas it, it never happens that way. The only way that you really can truly know how to get there is to have an incremental approach to evaluate in very short cycles to really learn 
uh, where you're going and to reduce risk if you're going in the wrong direction. So it just takes a while. And the the point about the Scrum Master as being one of those key change agents in this and a part of this whole webinar is you have to kind of set some of these opportunities in motion, whereas we talked about it before, communities of practice, learning opportunities. It's an ongoing education. You might sound like a broken record talking about the same things over and over again. People get tired of it, but I mean, you're telling the truth. People will chat to you and in, the, in the remote environments. I, I see it. People will chat you on the side like, man, you're saying the right things. I, I don't They're just not getting it. But you, you just got to keep doing it. You keep sticking with it because that's your, that's your role as a change agent is to keep talking about where we need to go and how we need to kind of get back into a, an agile mindset or we need to evolve to this versus staying in the same in the same space where we are stuck in kind of a traditional project mindset. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have thick skin. Sometimes you gotta have be persistent. You don't, you never give up. You just keep pushing it. And cause this is, you know, this is your responsibility as a scrum master, you're a change agent. That's what you do. So. I was going to add to that, Charles, to what you said about that flexibility in the mindset and mapping out to the nth degree, um, you know, with the with the reflection of this um, holiday season that we're coming up with and people who use ways, right, you know, trying to, you know, you start out with a path every day. And when you when you're on it, you start assessing the data real time. You know, you start looking and, and looking towards feedback. And part of that transformation is letting go of the assumption that, you know, and actually looking at what are you learning? What is it that we see? Because even in a sprint as a scrum master, uh, you, you're still making a quasi commitment. That's a forecast, you know? And so that's what the, the scrum master can get caught. And then you, you fall right back into that project management mindset versus no, we're forecasting and we're doing our job to look at what are the uh, impediments that may block us and trying to resolve those. However, at the same time, we may need to give feedback to say, you know what, we had three tests come back and this is not going and we're midway through the sprint. We need to make some adjustments in our commitment because this is gonna affect other teams downstream. So it's being honest about your feedback. And sometimes a scrum master has to deliver hmm, Unconvenient truths, <laughs> and 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 you can't wait to the last minute to do it, though it would feel better. Um, the, the scrum master has to deliver to the PL. You know what? This is not happening. Um, we we know what we committed to, but based on what we've seen, this, it, there's just too much congestion, i.e., traffic. And when you have to let somebody know you're going to be late, you know you don't wait to five minutes. As soon as you start seeing that pattern, you have to let go of what you predicted and the and and sunken costs. Charles, I think that's a good way to say it. If you want to let go of a project management mindset is to let go of how much you've invested into something so, so that you don't get locked into it so you can stay agile and keep that mindset. So don't, don't think, you know, we put all this time into it. That'd be one of the easiest ways not to trick yourself into locking in on certainty. Uh, the scrum master has to manage a certain level of uncertainty to give themselves flexibility. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you both for, for uh, answering that question. And thank you, Rose, for, for asking the, the great, the great question. Um, so for the, for the sake of time, uh, I want to just kind of move on just briefly close before, before we close. Um, we, so both of you, Charles and, and, and awesome. Thank you for, for sharing the information and sharing the knowledge. Uh, you both presented some very insightful information and brought us some analogies from, uh, from what we see on a, on a almost day to day basis. Um, so with that, with that being said, and your knowledge that you have awesome, do you have any upcoming classes that we can benefit from and, and participate in and learn more about the role of the scrum master? Uh, yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> yes. I, and I think this is important too. how, how, how we, how we land this, um, from I actually agile's perspective and, and co-hosted and supported by with I4, uh, we have the Scrum Master training, which is for entry level, or you have some experience on July 12th and the, um, through the 15th. And then we have the Scrum Master Advanced training um, through August 16th and the 19th. And there are some unique differences in between the two that, you know, like that picture where, you know, which way do I go, right, uh, is important to know. I've had, uh, um, Charles, I'm quite sure you too, have Scrum Masters show up at the Scrum Master Advanced training. 
and they're new, they just got the job or they're, they're, they, they're going at their new opportunity and it doesn't cover the DSU, right? It's because you have matured in your development, the, the prerequisites that you've already established those patterns and you're looking at KPIs and workflow and conflict management and how to continue to push and elevate your game. So that way you can move from Kilimanjaro to K2 to the Himalayas, right? Uh, you can continue your ascent and with the teams that you work with. So it's, it's good to know that. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Charles, any thoughts from you? Yeah, definitely. Definitely want to know that you're, you're, you feel comfortable. You're taking the right training options. And as we mentioned before, you're yeah, talking about how to navigate. Uh, we've seen, you know, so many come, come through this path before and, and definitely have a good, lot of good ideas to share with you. And again, would love to, to help you um, in any way to, to, to be the best practitioner you can be. Yeah. So we're, we're definitely open to that. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you both for, for that as well. So um, I think that is definitely something uh, that we can we can benefit from um, uh, taking the, co the courses with you both. So from in sharing, being able to experience the knowledge uh, firsthand in, in the courses. Um, so with that, uh, and that kind of concludes our webinar for today. Um, I did want to add the information for um, Charles and Awesome as well. So for any email questions, um, uh, any any final thoughts, awesome or or Charles, before we close out this session here? No, thanks for taking time. Uh, I think one of the main uh, that I've heard. Um, oh, there's a question that came into the QA. If you want to pick it up, but um, thanks for the time. Uh, this is important. Our time is limited. You know, everyone has sort of Zoom or you know Teams fatigue at this point. So the fact that you came here to join us, with our intent was to deliver value to you and to make sure that we gave you something that we believe that you can't read in a book. Um, and hopefully we were able to do that. Um, feel free to reach out to us for mentorship opportunities, you know, tag us on LinkedIn. Uh, and, and we're here to support as Charles said, and help grow the community. Yeah, and I just said to, to add to that too, um, definitely we're uh, open to support. If you know if there's anyone that might benefit from this recording, this recording will be posted. You might get an email on, you know, somebody else might benefit from this discussion. Uh, be on the lookout. Awesome and I are also doing a, a diversity panel on agility, and that'll be coming up next month on just being a diverse uh, individual, you know, uh, someone of uh, of, diver of diverse background in in the industry of agility and how that uh, can play out and some of the the things to look out for. And that's going to be coming up next month, and we'd love to have you guys tune into that as well. Um, so yeah, look forward to uh, hearing from anybody. And uh, thanks a lot, Mohammed, for moderating and Amanda. Thank you guys so much and those that attended. And feel free to follow us on, on LinkedIn and stay in touch uh, as we continue in our collaboration and working in, in co-hosting events and, and trainings that we intend to build a center of excellence within our own communities of practice, right? With the work that we do that drives and what sets us apart. You know, uh, some of us may uh, always forever be apprentice because we always want to keep learning, right? And we may feel uncomfortable with the term master, but we're lifelong learners and education is a core fundamental part of this. There are, every time we step into a new environment, we're learning and I shift to the apprentice. I turn it over to the master, Charles. <laughs> all right, well, thank you. Thank and you that's Mohammed. <laughs> Thank you both so much for taking the time out of your day to share with us this, uh, uh, this information. Uh, we've definitely learned a lot here today, um, and uh, we definitely see value in, in learning more from, from you both. So uh, very much appreciated to both of you uh, and to Amanda for being uh, available uh, and assisting us as well. Um, and then also I'd like to all thank all the attendees uh, for joining us. Again, taking the time out of your day to join us for on a Thursday um, and you know after lunch and being able to learn from us, uh, from from Awesome and from Charles. Uh, so I do want to reach out and thank you all. So um, as Charles mentioned, you will probably you will get uh, following the email uh, with the recording of this of this uh, webinar. Uh, so if you do have any any questions, feel free to uh, email us. I have the emails both for Charles and for Awesome uh, up on the screen. So feel free to, uh, as they mentioned, reach out on LinkedIn uh, and uh, contact contact us through the through the their emails as well. So, all right.
And I believe that is all the time that we have for today. We want to respect everyone's time. Uh, it is two o'clock. So uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, end the session here. And again, thank you all for attending. Thank you all for uh, taking the time. And I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day.